narrow street off Cairo's native quarter, not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan, stands the Café Tambourine, clouded with the smoke of oriental tobaccos, crowded with forgotten men from the world's waterfronts. The Café Tambourine. I own it. My name's Rocky Jordan. Tonight and every weeknight at this time, we take you to a world of excitement, intrigue, and danger in far-off Egypt, to Cairo for the transcribed adventures of an American in the Middle East, starring Jack Moyles as Rocky Jordan. Business was good. Not only the natives, the camel drivers, the merchants, but tourists. A cafe full just off the boat and taking it all in, seeing the local color. Natives watching tourists, tourists watching natives. And they were both enjoying themselves. It was after 11 when Bert, my head bartender, called me over to the cash register. You wanted in the back booth, Rock. She's a looker, she is. I followed Bert's glance and pushed my way back through the crowd. She was sitting alone, twisting a scarf between her fingers, then sipping a vodka over ice. Red hair, green eyes, high cheekbones. I knew her. Hello, Rocky. Sit down. Hello, Sharita. I didn't see you come in. I came in the back entrance. I remembered the way. Oh? It has been a long time. Yeah. Uh, where are you dancing now? At the oasis. I would rather be at a tambourine, as in the old days, Rocky. <laughs> I can dance better than her. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, time passes, Sharita. I see. What's on your mind? Have you seen Mustafa lately? Not for about a year or so, I guess. Why? I'm worried, Rocky. That is why I came to you. You know how much Mustafa has done for my people, how he has always tried to keep the tribal chieftains peaceful when others were stirring up trouble among them. Well, I don't go in for politics, Sharita, but I know Mustafa saved my life once, and that's good enough for me. He has always regarded you as a son, Rocky. What's the matter? Is he in trouble? There has been much unrest lately. Mustafa has established secret headquarters to avoid an outbreak. He has left Cairo. Well, that's not unusual for him. But tonight, earlier, while I was dancing at the Oasis Club, I saw a man named Arubin at one of the tables. You know him? No, I know his name. I've never run into him. I hope you never do. He's evil, like a snake. I was startled to see him here in Cairo. He's wanted by the police. So, a character named Harubin's in town. What makes you think he's after Mustafa? Around the oasis, they are saying death to Mustafa. Harubin is here for that. He is the assassin. Rocky, someone must find our leader, must warn him. Well, what about the police? You know they will not act. There is politics at police headquarters as elsewhere. Will they take sides in a tribal war? You know they will not. Well, I'm sorry, Sharita. I'm afraid tribal wars are a little out of my line, too. Rocky, there is no one else I can turn to. I would go myself if I knew where to look. You have the contacts. You are trusted. You can find Mustafa and warn him in time. The leader of my people once saved your life. Can you be unwilling to save his? All right, Sharita. All right. I'll see what I can do. She left, the tall, willowy body disappearing through the crowd, and I was left with her story and her check. But the memory of Mustafa hung on, an old man who held a kind of religious power over his people, but like most leaders, was constantly being challenged for control. I left the tambourine and headed for a bazaar in the native quarter. One of Mustafa's contacts owned a rug shop there. Maybe he could get word to his leader. Then across the street and paralleling me, I spotted a native in a burnous. I slowed down, so did he. I speeded up. He followed suit. I reached a corner, then I saw another guy across the street starting toward me. I turned right, and a third one appeared down the street ahead of me. I stopped, then suddenly an English sedan turned the corner and pulled up beside me. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Won't you get in? I don't need to be invited twice. Thanks. You seem to be in something of a hurry. Ah, I was. 
No, but excuse me, we have not met. My name is Harubin. So I was steered to your car. Yes, I called at your cafe tambourine to see you a few moments ago. I was told you had left, so I followed. I wanted to be sure we had our little talk. Yeah. But Mr. Jordan, I have a business proposition for you. What kind of business, Harubin? A stupid native dancing girl has come to you with an absurd warning. Something about my trying to kill a man. Well, it is nonsense. Oh? Huh? Of course. With this girl and I, we had dinner together last evening. A private dining room. You, you understand what I mean, of course. I don't like that kind of humor. I will forget that for the moment. Stop the car. Jordan, if you make one move outside the Café Tambourine in the next 48 hours, you will be shot dead on the street. Do you understand that? Sherita was right then. It is not your affair. Do not let sentimentality cause your untimely passing. Now we will drive to a place of soft moonlight in the desert where my assistants will teach you to respect your elders. I do not want to soil my hands with your blood. Now, drive quickly. <laughs> What is that? Some friends of yours are Ruben, the police. Driver, quickly. See you later. Jump! I jumped clear as the car jerked forward, and suddenly a jeep roared up at us fast. A police jeep. A Ruben fired back at them, then his sedan was gone. The cops returned the fire, and I was in the middle of it. I dove into an alley. Too late. A slug creased my leg. I made it to a door and crawled inside. The gun battle moved up the dark street and away. Now I knew I had to get to Mustafa. And soon... I waited a few minutes, then edged out onto the street. Hugging the shadows, I made my way back to the tambourine. Bert was waiting for me in the hall outside my office. Rocky. I am kind of groggy, Bert. Help me into my office, will you? Rocky, the police are in there. Captain Zabaya. Sam? Good evening, Jordan. Come in, please. Captain Sam Sabaya, Cairo Police Force. A smart, tough cop, and the last guy in the world I wanted to see right now. I stood suddenly straight and walked into my office as though I was about to begin a new day with push-ups. As I sat down, my left arm covered the hole in my trousers. Are you all right, Jordan? I uh, sure, Sam. I just make yourself at home. I have been. What's on your mind? You. Oh? Where were you this evening? Well, here at the tambourine till about 9.30. That's right, Captain. And at 9.30, Jordan? I told Bert to take over, and I went over to the bazaar to look for a gift for a friend. Now, what's the beef, Sam? Do you know a man named Haruben? Mm -hmm. I've heard of him. As you perhaps are aware, he is a wanted man. We have been on his trail for some time. Tonight, some of my men under Sergeant Greco almost caught him. Almost? <laughs> Greco goofed again, huh? Jordan... The fact that you and Sergeant Greco do not like each other is not at issue. As my officers closed in on Haruben, they saw a man jump from his car. Haruben got away, and so did the other man. Well, it's too bad, Sam, but I don't see what it's got to do with me. Greco is sure he shot that other man. Furthermore, he got a brief glimpse of him in the alley, and he's almost positive it was you, Jordan. Me? <laughs> Sam, you sure got a weird sense of humor. You know me better than to think this is a joke. Any associate of Herr Rubens must be regarded as his accomplice. If the man with him tonight was you... Oh, get smart, Sam. If I were the guy and Greco shot me, do you think I'd be sitting here talking to you right now? Hmm. It does not seem likely, I must admit. Look, Sergeant Greco can imagine he sees me everywhere. He spends half his time trying Jordan. to find... Jordan! Greco's got it in for me and you know it, Sam. Why else would he come to you with a cock and bull story like this? What would I want with a man like Harubin? Now, if you don't mind, Bert and I have some paperwork to do. Very well, Jordan. I sincerely hope you are not involved. But if you are... Yeah, 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 yeah. See you later, Sam. Indeed you will, Jordan. Good night. Rocky. Shh. Yeah. He's gone, Rocky. Oh, Bert, I think I better... Rocky! Give me some brandy, huh? Rocky, you've got to stay out of this. I can't. I owe a man something. My life. Thanks, Bert. Now give me a hand out to my car, huh? Sure, Rock. 
Rocky, it's it's none of my business, but don't you think it might be better to tell the police? Well, I wanted to tell Sam, but Harubin is a shoot-on-sight character to the cops. Anybody they tie in with him has a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, that's true. Sure, I could clear myself, but it'd take time. Time is one thing I don't have right now. I've got to locate Mustafa, and I can't wait for red tape. Can you make it all right? Oh, sure. Come on, you start her up. After the doctor patches me up, I... Oh, great. You do not seem to be walking so well, Jordan. Hello, Sam. In your office, I noticed your tan had faded. Loss of blood sometimes has that effect. You got sharp eyes, Grandma. Look, Sam, so I was with her, Reuben. I can explain. I will be most interested in your explanation. But there's something I have to take care of first. First, we will go to police headquarters. This is important, Sam. Trust me. A friend of mine's in danger. Oh, look, you know me well enough to Jordan, know... where it is a matter of duty, I do not know you at all. We will help your friend after a visit to headquarters. <sighs> okay, Sam. We'll do it your way. You want me to come with you, Rocky? No, uh, you stay close to the tambourine, Bert. Yes, sir. Move over, Jordan. I will drive. I'm sorry to do this, Sam, but you Jordan! stay here! Jordan, don't be a fool! Come back, Jordan! I turned the corner and stepped on the accelerator. Mustafa was going to take a lot of finding, but I had to do it before Harubin did. It was going to be between us. And it was one race I didn't want to end in a dead heat. Rocky Jordan. Listen Monday through Friday at this time as we take you to a world of excitement, intrigue, and danger in far-off Egypt. To Cairo for the transcribed adventures of an American in the Middle East, starring Jack Moyles as Rocky Jordan. Rocky Jordan is produced in Hollywood. This is the CBS Radio Network.